Warframe, I think, is one of those games that's great for really unwinding at the end of the day. I mean, what better way to recharge from eight hours of menial, repetitive labor at your job than spending two hours of menial, repetitive labor to get a Prime Warframe blueprint? You're a Prime, come on. Damn it. But what do you do when even that starts to grind your gears? Well, I mean, you could just, you know, step away for half an hour, take a walk outside, just do something to really reset and recharge, and then maybe... Or we go a layer deeper. That's right, baby, we're escaping to a game within a game. The Ludoplex is a decoration that can be bought from Cephalon Samaris for 50k standing. When they designed this virtual games console, DE was clearly taking inspiration from PlayStation because, <laughs> you know, Ludo- <laughs> Well, you have one game to start with, Frame Fighter. But there are two more you can buy from Samaris, Wormius and <coughs> Happy Zephyr. Technically, these games were Easter eggs first and can be accessed without paying the standing cost, but buying them from Samaris lets you put all your games in one place and not have to keep mid around in your inventory if you're short on slots. Hey, what the fu- But speaking of inventory, you do actually get a tangible reward for playing these games. Each game has a unique poster that you get for quote unquote completing it. What that means can vary, but it's a good enough motivator for me, so let's revisit these games, see if they're worth the price of admission, and get some cool swag out of it. Wormius is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up game where you play as a single worm sentinel fighting your way through a corpus ship. This minigame serves as a great reminder of how useless sentinels were before the companion rework, because while you do have three lives, you die in one hit, no matter what. You also get three weapons of varying effectiveness to use, a default laser attack that upgrades to have spread, an arcing missile that's good for bombarding ground units, and a short-range, slow-firing projectile that does great damage at the risk of you becoming just another spare parts statistic. You both upgrade and switch weapons by picking up these mods which cycle between colors corresponding to each weapon. Picking up the same weapon twice upgrades it by one level up to three, and picking up a different color switches your weapon but retains your current level. This is something that I think is actually a really good idea with this game's design, because it encourages you to switch up your weapon to match the situation at hand, which is good because given how short and surprisingly tough this game is, you'll have a lot of time to memorize the order of rooms and enemies you're presented with. The only way to lower your weapon's level is by dying, which means that if you choke in a room full of baddies, having a weaker weapon is probably just going to lead to more deaths and a game over in short order. The enemies standing in your way are a mixed bag. You've got drones with a few attack patterns, and a few that just flat out spawn out of the floor to blindside you, but that's probably just a bug. There are also crewmen that shoot arcing projectiles. Now these are easy to dodge, but that just makes it all the more frustrating when one actually catches you out. They can also fire a single, small, fast moving bullet, but that's just a visual bug, and it can't hurt you. Guess it's just some of the spaghetti code from this minigame being around for almost 10 years. MOAs will bombard you with lasers, but keeping your distance and moving around is usually enough to deal with them. There are also turrets which fire in a fixed pattern and are easy to deal with, when there isn't a wall in the way blocking your vision. After you clear the turret room of cringe though, you fight the first boss, a railgun MOA, and it's surprisingly easy. He mainly just jumps around the arena and occasionally sets the floor on fire. It's very easy to just get in his face with a yellow laser and chunk him down. Or at least that's what I thought until I flew up and yeah. The boss's attacks are bugged and all originate from the top right corner of the arena. I have no idea how long this has been a thing, but it happened every time I came through here, so I guess we just take that as an easy dub and move on. The final boss is none other than GASP! A meta sentinel? Helios is cool, and the bullet spam it hits you with is a neat pattern, but it's a very fixed and slow pattern. So it's easy to beat once you've got it down. Putting the smackdown on Helios for the first time earns you the wormiest poster, and the game will hit you with the message that basically boils down to, the fun never ends, go back to the beginning and do it again. And you get ported back to the start of the level with harder enemies. The cycle continues until you run out of lives, but honestly, once was enough for me, thanks. I'll just take my poster and move on. Overall, Wormius was a fun distraction, if nothing else. I was honestly surprised there weren't more bugs in it. I mean, there's no way someone on the dev team came back to fix Wormius, right? Right? 
It is currently Wednesday, March 27th. Dante Unbound just dropped with a slew of content and quality of life updates. And what am I doing? I'm playing a Flappy Bird clone. I cannot stress enough that this was, at one point, a topical reference to a 2013 mobile game, with Happy Zephyr being released in 2014. That's right, we just passed the Happy Zephyr 10 year anniversary and nobody even said anything. What you see here is what you get. You play a Zephyr, or Zephyr Prime if you have them, and you jump through gaps in storage containers, just like Flappy Bird. And you know what? It's actually surprisingly enjoyable. I have to admit, I didn't play much Flappy Bird back in the day, and I have no interest in buying an Android with a legit copy installed now, but the physics involved with your jump make the gameplay surprisingly fair and enjoyable to improve at. And, let me tell you, it definitely did take a bit of improving to get this poster, which requires a score of 50. Wish I could be playing Dante Unbound right now- No! Man, fuck this, I need to get a job. What if it was called- What if instead of Flappy Bird, it was called, like, Freaky Bird, and he, he ate ass and sucked toes? Damn it! Upon receiving my poster, I was also informed that I immediately became ranked 4th in the weekly Happy Zephyr leaderboards. Yeah, remember leaderboards? This is a trick question because I've honestly never heard of them up until this point. This was also how I found out that I was the third ranked wormiest player that week, out of 14 players. Yeesh. Overall though, I'd say I enjoyed Happy Zephyr more than Wormius, actually, because while what it sets out to do is a lot more simple than the other game, it achieves what it sets out to do with flying colors, and on top of that it doesn't suffer from any weird bugs. And hey, we've only got one more game to go, and would you believe it, we saved the best for last. Frame Fighter is the most recent minigame. Starting life as a set of real-life arcade cabinets at TennoCon 2018 with a custom game installed, it lets you take one of your Warframes and duke it out against other players in a simplified fighting game format. All Warframes have the same moveset, save for a special attack that actually incorporates one of their in-game abilities, which is a cool touch. You collect the poster for Frame Fighter just by getting every single character data fragment. These are just sort of scattered around on different planets, so you could actually complete Frame Fighter without even even having to touch the gameplay itself, but that's kind of lame, so I decided to get my friend CJ in here so we can rank every single frame on a tier list. Oh. Oh, wait. No, no, this game is actually bad. It's... This game is completely unplayable. Yeah, you heard me right. Frame Fighter, the latest, most modern Ludoplex game, is literally bricked to the point of not even being worth playing. The most notable and game-breaking bug here being that hit stun on certain attacks just completely freezes up your opponent, making them unable to attack or do anything other than move side to side. There's a lot more, but those would all just sort of be funny intricacies if this game, again, actually functioned. I'd say DE please fix, but who would they be fixing it for? I genuinely believe that me and my friends were the only people playing Frame Fighter. I mean, I know the phrase dead game is thrown around all willy-nilly these days to talk about games people just don't like, but this aspect of Warframe? With bugs and a total lack of players combined, it's not just dead, it's actively decomposing and making a stink in the rest of the game. And now here's where we ask, why? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I tricked you. This isn't a video about collecting funny posters anymore. Nah, now we're talking about game design and the health of Warframe as a whole. Don't bother getting out of your seats. The doors have already been sealed. Joking aside, I genuinely feel conflicted about these games. I mean, both Frame Fighter and, to a lesser extent, Wormius have bugs that break the intended experience of the game, and they'll undoubtedly accumulate more as the game continues into the future. Sure, DE could spend time, effort, and money fixing these problems, and coming back every update to make sure everything functions right, but what would be the point in that? To keep the dozen or so weekly wormiest players happy? Warframe is already full of, no offense to the Ludoplex, real content that needs those same types of fixes with each update, and those see literally hundreds of thousands more players than these. Furthermore, leaving these games in their current state is actively embarrassing and reflects poorly on the rest of the game. I mean, sure, this isn't a likely experience, seeing as the Ludoplex costs tons of standing from an off-the-beaten-path vendor, but remember that Frame Fighter character fragments are just out there. 
everywhere, begging an unaware player to follow that trail of breadcrumbs to Samaris and buy the funny minigame cabinet. Playing two out of the three games that have major bugs combined with the heavy grind to get what amounts to a very expensive piece of Orbiter set dressing, that could cause someone to put the game down outright. So the answer seems clear then, right? Stop the bleeding, delete the ludoplex, and not worry about players forming a bad opinion about your game based on some neglected minigame collection. You could even turn the ludoplex itself into some sort of utility piece, let me use it to access the simulacrum from my ship or something. But at the same time, a part of me still likes these games, flaws and all. The first Sentinel I ever collected back in the day was Carrier, obviously, but after that, I bought Worm, and I actually discovered the wormiest minigame through the easter egg in the appearances selector. This game is a nostalgic experience for me, and seeing it go, even if it was for a very understandable reason, would hurt a little. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm still conflicted, honestly, as to what would be the best option for the Ludoplex, fixing the games, deleting them entirely, or just leaving it as is. If you've got anything to add, though, I'd love to hear it down in the comments. Ooh boy, let me tell you, I genuinely did not expect this video to turn into some kind of melancholic rumination on content past. I genuinely thought we'd just be having a fun romp through some funny minigames, but as soon as I launched Frame Fighter, I knew I was in deep. Overall, if I were to rank these games in order of my enjoyment, at their peak, before bugs started becoming an issue, I'd have to go Wormius at the bottom, because once you've beaten it, you've really seen everything it has to offer. Then Frame Fighter in the middle because it could genuinely have been a funny little fighting game to mess around with your friends in. And Happy Zephyr at the top because goddamn, somehow, the Flappy Bird formula still holds up 10 years later. Also, Trinity is the best Warframe in Frame Fighter because Well of Life genuinely makes her invincible, so she goes to S tier and everyone else stays in F tier. Thank you. I also appreciate the banners I got for beating each game. I mean, they're a cool certificate of completion and I like the art used in them. So because of that, I mean, if DE did end up removing these mini games, it would be a shame that people wouldn't be able to get these cool decorations anymore. Hey, wait a minute. You know what? Never mind. I changed my mind. Delete the Ludoplex entirely. Then I'll be able to sell these posters for 1,000 platinum. Each.